Okay, so I was a bit of an idiot, and I forgot to turn on my microphone for the first portion of the tutorial, so I'm re-recording this audio. Um, I may not remember exactly everything that I had said during the tutorial, but I'm going to try to get the more important things and make sure that I get those across. Um, that being said, if my audio quality is different from this to the actual, to like the second part of the tutorial, I apologize, um, but that's why. <laughs> Now, this tutorial is something that was requested by Steph on Facebook. So thank you, Steph, for reaching out. Thank you so much for your question. And I'm going to do my best to show you what I know. Okay. So starting out, I just wanted to rough in a model to stand in for us because, of course, whatever object is going to be in this lighting is going to be the most important aspect and Steph has requested that we look at two different kinds of lighting today uh, one being lightning and the other being a person standing underneath a street light and each of these has their own pitfalls their own specific like light profile I suppose you could say um, so during this portion I'm just sketching in a person All right, now that we have our model, um, next we're going to decide where the lightning is going to be striking from. I chose to do behind the character and to my left of them, um, just for the sake of the tutorial. So first things first, because of where the lightning is, you're going to want to consider how the light is hitting the character, because that's going to make the difference. So I started with highlight because with lightning it's a lot easier to start there and especially if you're experimenting with light that is probably the best place to start. You're going to want to pay attention to the parts of the face that jet out. So like the curvature of the nose, that side of um, the bow and the lip, the outjet of the, the pout of the outer lip, the side of the face, um, the neck, and you're going to want to make that lighting very dramatic since that is the closest to where the lightning is crashing. Then on the other side of the face that is farther away from the light, you're going to add just a little bit of highlight to those out jets, but nothing as dramatic as right next to where the light is hitting. Um, the difference in intensity of light is what helps to create those deep signature shadows for a lightning flash. And while I'm doing that, I'm just adding little bits of highlight here and there where I see that it needs it. Um, the side of the body is going to be even less um, affected by the dramatic highlight than even the side of the face that's farthest away because it, the body is cast in so much more shadow. Next, I'm going to add um, the shading of the face. Now, the shadows are going to be more dramatic, but you do have to leave some room for you to darken even more than just standard shadows. So, I mean, don't go in and just go as hard as you can on the black. You're going to want to have a more even keel kind of shadow. That way you can layer darkness onto it afterwards as well. So once I get the base shape done, um, I'm going to start adding that dramatic black lighting and keeping in uh, consideration how the light is hitting the body, how the outjet of the parts of the body is going to change the way that shadow reads and making sure to leave space for it to blend into that middle shadow. Um, the neck and the body are going to be cast heavily in shadow because of the way that body mass works with the light. And you're just going to want to make sure that you meld the two. 
just make sure that you're getting a nice even coverage. I was using an airbrush, so of course my coverage isn't all that even, but for the sake of our tutorial, it will, it'll get the point across. And your finished product should look a little something like this. From there, um, I start on the next part of the tutorial, which is the street light. And it was actually um, in the middle of sketching out this model that I realized that my microphone was not on, so... And at first I was starting out trying to sketch a jankety street light just so that we know where our light source is coming from. And instead I just went with the bulb for the sake of the tutorial. And next I'm sketching out our all-important model. I wanted to be sure to make it a person that didn't look exactly like the previous one. Let's get some representation, some diversity a little bit. They looked really sad and I wanted to alter that and instead I just made them look even more sad. So, you know, it's whatever. So I just realized my microphone's been off this entire time. Good job. For this, your middle tones are going to be all important. So your light source is coming down and is spreading out as well. I always like to highlight first because that gives me a baseline of where to shade. Um, unless I'm doing like a big ornate piece then I'll usually shade first but when I'm experimenting with different light I definitely definitely want to highlight first because that tells me where my middle tones are gonna be how far my shadows are gonna need to reach etc okay so since the light is coming from above it's going to hit the parts on top of the head and you know disperse down a little bit so you know eyelashes are going to catch that light eyebrows the top of the nose rather than um, in the last one where like the side was catching it you're going to get a little bit on the upper lip but not very much you might get depending on how full their lips are you might get a little bit of light caught in the middle there um everything else is going to be kind of cast in shadow because you know they're surrounded by darkness but they have soft light around them all right so for the shading um see there's going to be these middle tones here that come down and then the bottom parts of the face are going to be cast in more shadow so let's Let's get that shadow in there. And then you're gonna wanna have harsher shadows on those parts that are farthest away from the light and slowly have them um, meld into that middle tone. This is coming out way darker than I needed to. Hold on. That's better. You're also going to want to take into, account, into consideration the curvature of the face because you're going to shade the face normally as well as add that extra dramatic shadow to show that this person is beneath the light source. So all those sucking in parts, let me lighten this up a bit. smooth out those shadows. Since I'm using an airbrush tool, it's not going to be exceptionally smooth. But, you know, the, um, the more sunken in a part is going to be, and the more things that um, protrude out over it, the darker the lighting is going to be. So with the neck, um, right under the chin line, there's going to be a whole lot more shadow than, you know, moving on out to the chest area, which is going to be a protrusion area. I hope that is at least somewhat helpful for you, Steph. Thanks again for 
coming to me with questions. I am always happy to help and to answer any questions you might have. And I know that lighting is a particularly difficult subject matter. Uh, when in doubt, look for references. Always, always, always you want to have references. Um, there's been discourse about that being cheating. That's not true. If you go to any art school, they're going to tell you to use references because half of drawing is what you see. Um, references are your best friend, honestly. And just keep practicing at it, you know? Take your references and draw several different pictures with several different forms of lighting based on those references, just to try to understand it more. And eventually you'll come into your own with it, okay? Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I look forward to helping you further.